Welcome to week two of the Prayer Covenant series. How was week one for you? Did you see Liam's Bible reading space on Facebook? It was pretty neat. You should check it out on our Generations Kids private Facebook page. That's where you can post your prayer wraps, your coloring pages, or anything else you want to share in week two on love. If you have any questions, you can email Darlene. See you there. Good morning, friends. This is my friend Quinn, and we are so excited to be with you today. We're getting our breakfast ready to go. We're having waffles. Quinn is doing such a great job making these waffles that she deserves a high five. In fact, everyone should get a high five. Can you give me a high five? Ready? On the count of three. I want an air high five. Ready? One, two, three. Great job. Last week, we learned all about grace and how God shows us grace even when we don't deserve it. We challenge you to find a prayer chair, and I hope you were able to do that because today we're going to learn all about love. Ooey gooey, mushy gushy love, but not actually your Valentine's Day type love, but our love for God and how we can show God that we love Him. Do you know that grace leads to love? When we recognize how much grace God has shown us, it makes us just want to love God and obey God even more. Before we worship, why don't you pull out your prayer covenant card and we will read the grace line and the love line together. Ready? Read with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and making me one of your children. Help me love and obey you. I'm so sorry. Great job. It's okay, Quinn. And great job on the waffles. You know what? We all mess up. That's okay. Let's, let's, you can have a bite of your waffles. And you know what? This is ready just in time because Abby is ready to worship. So why don't you stand up and do a big stretch and we'll get ready to worship. But first, I'm going to add some whipped cream to my coffee. Makes my heart come alive Suddenly brought to life when I met you Reaching beyond the skies Running deep, stretching wide Perfect love realized here with you Now this love is for real, you will never let go
suddenly brought to life when I met you. Hi kids, have you ever been on a big trip? A trip that you know you are going to be on for a very long time? Well, I have. I actually took a trip across the country from Ontario to move here to British Columbia. Why? Because God asked me to come. And I love God so much. And I trust Him and I want to obey Him. It was pretty scary at first, but God helped me. You know, there was a man in the Bible that God asked to move to. His name was Abraham, and he lived a very, very long time ago. And when he was pretty old, God said to him, leave your country, your family, and all your friends, and go to the land that I will show you. I will bless you, and I will make you and your descendants into a great nation. You will become famous and be a blessing to others. Everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. That's a pretty great promise, isn't it, boys and girls? Abraham obeyed God. He left with his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, and all of their belongings. They moved a long way from home. I wonder if he brought his passport. They moved to this new home that they called the Promised Land. Can you think of why Abraham did what God asked him to do? Yep, you got it. He was learning to love and obey. Abraham leaving his home was just the beginning of his lifelong adventure of growing in obedience love and faith in God. You see, Abraham is someone that we can learn from. Just like Abraham had to learn to love and obey, we can too. Can you do it? I think you can. For example, when we are obeying our parents, we are actually obeying God. In the Bible, God says, obey our parents in all things. And when we do that, we show God how much we love him. Abraham probably had a hard time understanding why God wanted him to leave behind his hometown. But he still obeyed, boys and girls, because he loved God. And God's good plan was revealed over many years, and Abraham came to understand part of it. Sometimes we don't understand why our parents are asking us to do something. But we can trust them. We can trust them that it's for our own good, because they love us, just like Abraham trusted God. You see, love and obedience are strong cords that God designed to work together. So, will you go on a journey with God? That journey of loving Him and obeying Him? Abraham went, and God rewarded him. What is God asking you to do today? Did you know that when something is the greatest, you likely want to be part of it? You want in, like discovering what is the greatest ice cream flavor of all time. Wouldn't that be great? Well, let's see what it is. I'm going to taste four different kinds here. Hmm, this one here is your classic chocolate. Hmm, can't go wrong with chocolate. That's delicious. Second, we actually have Caramel cookie fix. Oh, who loves caramel? I love caramel. Mmm, oh, that one's good too. Wow. Then, of course, we have your um, chocolate fudge because, you know, you got to have a little different variation of chocolate. Mmm, that is so good. So good. And last but certainly not least, we have cookie dough. Raise your hand if you love cookie dough, boys and girls. I'm going to taste this. Mmm, mmm. Oh, boys and girls, that is, that's the clear winner. Absolutely, I'm sure. We all have different ideas, boys and girls. What the greatest ice cream flavor of all times. But 
what the greatest is? Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew what the greatest commandment is. There's no disputing it. There's no taste testing or asking for other opinions. In fact, if we live like it is the greatest commandment, our lives will be changed, transformed. So for sure, it's so important to memorize this. So let's do it together. Matthew 22, 37 to 38 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. All right, we are going to say it again, but this time in a loud voice, so loud that you're going to wake up your teenage brother. Here we go. Ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 22, 37 to 38. That was good. And sometimes we get distracted from the greatest commandment. Some t- something tries to jump in and throw us off, but we really need to keep going. We really need to keep loving Jesus, right? So boys and girls, let's say this finger right here, this finger is the distraction. It's going to try and stop me from loving the Lord, but it can't stop me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest the greatest commandment boys and girls will be your greatest victory keep it in your heart today and always let your love for jesus just be like your favorite ice cream you can't live without it hi friends that was a great story about a man named abraham wasn't it and how he learned to love and obey the Lord. Yes, it was. But what does it mean to love the Lord? What does it mean to love him with all your heart and your soul? What does it mean to obey? I'd like to show you, Pastor Jenny. All right. How are you going to do that? Well, I have a little lesson that I call water you talking about. All right. Okay. This sounds good. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, kids? Here's the deal. We're all born with sin, right? That's the right. Bible says that we have all fallen short and sin. That's right. You're right, Pastor Mark. And yeah, we all sometimes make bad choices, selfish choices. Actually, even Abraham, although he did obey God and leave his home and go to a new land, along the way, he made some pretty lousy choices. Yeah. But you know what? God did help him make good choices too. So today we're going to need this glass container, Pastor Jenny gets, which represents us, you, me, okay. all of us, and these two signs, one that says good choices and one that says bad choices. Thank you for helping me. I'm going to put my arrow oh, right arrow. in the mer- middle of where the arrow should point. But where do you think it should point? Well, you know, since uh, we've all sinned, I think, and we've all made bad choices, I think let's point the arrow towards the bad choices, okay? Can you see that, boys and girls? Okay. Well, you're right. We all have sin. Like, we're all human. We make messes. It's, it's hard. So we'll put, put, put there behind the bad choices. However, watch this. God gives us help in the person of the Holy Spirit. This water represents the person of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, we start to listen to his voice because okay. that's why he's there. He leads us to make good choices. Check this out as I pour in God's presence into our lives. He points us to good choices. Do you see the arrow turn? Wow, the arrow actually moved. It's so cool. What are you talking about? (laughs) I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit, how he constantly directs us to loving the Lord, helping us with our heart and our soul and our mind to love God with everything. That's so amazing. I know. But Pastor Mark, how do we hear the Holy Spirit? Oh, great question. Mm -hmm. See, there's lots of ways to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. First, the Bible says that blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So really, boys and girls, we need to be reading our Bibles. There's so much in there that helps us make great choices. And for sure, we are talking about prayer these days. Yes, we are. Another way we can hear the Holy Spirit speak to us is through prayer. 
Let's go see what Pastor Laurel has to say about that. Oh, wow. She is always filled with great words of wisdom. I'm so excited. We'll see you later, boys and girls. Yeah, I'm excited too. See you later, boys and girls. Welcome back to the prayer chair. Did you find a prayer chair? What color was it? Does it spin like mine? I bet it's fabulous. I have been praying for you all this week because I know many of you went back to school and there have been so many changes. Did it feel different? Was it hard? Remember, you're God's child and he loves you so much. So try this. When you come in from school, go to your prayer chair, take a deep breath in, let it out and tell God about the stuff that happened at school and how it felt. Ask God to help you obey all the new rules and safety stuff. He wants to do that and he will. This is a way we learn to love and obey God. Now, I told you I'd tell you about starting a prayer journal. Here's mine and I've just started this one and I'm so excited about the things that God is going to teach me as I use it. You can use any kind of notebook or paper and you don't have to write much or even write well to keep a journal. In fact, you can color, draw, or put things into your journal that help you remind you what God has shown you. If Abraham kept a prayer journal, what do you think he might have put in it? It's a good question, right? Remember from the story how God told Abraham he was going to be a great blessing? To help him understand, God said, Abraham, look at the stars. There are millions. Well, your love and obedience is going to bring blessing to millions and millions of people. Wow! Abraham would have grabbed his prayer journal and because he couldn't draw people very well, he would have drawn the stars. Now, you have a prayer chair, you're soon going to have a journal, and I'm excited for the things God is going to show you. And remember, if you have any questions, just ask because you don't want to miss out, out on anything God has for you. I'm going to start by writing this prayer in my journal. Help me love and obey you. You go on ahead and join Allie. She's going to show you how you can make a simple prayer journal. Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Laurel always has such good ideas. And I think her best idea today was the prayer journal. Let's make one together. All you need is a few pieces of paper. And then you can fold them in half just like this. And then you can even get a grown-up to help you staple them together so they don't fly apart. Once you have all your papers folded and stapled together, you can use crayons, pencil crayons. I used felts. And you can use stickers and decorate it. Here's mine, all finished. It's all ready for me to write all my prayers in. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Can you send us a picture of your prayer journal? Tag us at at CLA Church Kids. I'd love to see it. And I can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Thanks for coming. See you next week. i